Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to OT Rex. In today's video is about agnosias, and agnosias is kind of like a broader term word, and it means that there is an inability to process sensory information. And that could be any kind of sensory information. So it could be recognizing people's faces, shapes, sounds. So depending on the type of agnosia it is, it's going to lead to different difficulties with processing sensory information. Please note that this is neurological and it is often something that happens after brain damage. So you'll see this a lot with uh, the stroke population as well as any you know brain related injuries and uh, this these deficits don't have anything to do with memory loss they might seem like it but it is neurological so keep that in mind while we work through some of these examples I also want to remind you all that there are so many different types of agnosias and clearly this handout isn't going to cover all of them let's go ahead and get started with visual agnosia on the top right and as it sounds, visual agnosia would mean that you can't recognize objects, but your eyes are healthy and normal. So it doesn't have to do with your vision. It's neurological, so you can't recognize objects because of the neurological piece. There are two major breakdowns or kinds of visual agnosia. There's a perceptive visual agnosia, and that means that you can't distinguish visual shapes. And if someone has difficulty with that, then that means copying and recognizing shapes is also going to be quite difficult. So if you were to present someone who has a perceptive visual agnosia, like shapes to copy, they, they're going to have a hard time doing that. The way that I remember this is I think of visual perceptual skills and the word perceptive is in a perceptive. So a means without or not having in medical terminology. So this person does not have visual perceptive skills. And that's how I remember that. The next one is associative visual agnosia. And this one means that the person can describe or associate, keyword there, associate visual descriptions to objects, but they can't recognize them. So this sounds kind of funny because it's like, they might be able to describe something as if they know it, like a, let's say, oh, you know, a star has five sides or five corners. Um, but if you were to give them that shape, they wouldn't be able to label it as a star. The main difference between a perceptive and associative visual agnosia is that for associative, they can copy the image, which makes sense because if they can describe it, then they can copy it. It's just that they can't label them or recognize them. So those are the two major kinds of visual agnosia. And there are other types of agnosia, like it's very broad. So when you think auditory agnosia, you can break that down and figure out, okay, auditory would mean that sound. So they can't tell apart different sounds. They might not be able to tell apart a person speaking versus background noise, for example. So you start to kind of understand like what would these agnosias mean just by learning a couple of them and I hope that's helpful. Let's jump to the middle top at prosopagnosia. I remember the first time I learned about this I thought that this was such a strange concept and the the word is kind of hard to remember. So prosopagnosia is face blindness which it sounds exactly what it sounds like or it is exactly what it sounds like, they can't recognize faces. This is due to occipital temporal lobe damage. And that means on a day-to-day -day basis, whoever you run into, if you have prosopagnosia, you aren't recognizing who this person is. You're not able to remember and put a face to a person. So the breakdown for the word prosopagnosia is Greek. The Greek word for face is proso, and the the agnosia piece is like the lack of knowledge. So it would mean that you have a lack of knowledge in recognizing faces. If you have a creative way to remember that, please leave it in the comments. I'm going to move on to the left to anoso agnosia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's how I've heard it. So. 
Anosognosia is when you can't tell that you have a deficit or a diagnosis when you do have some kind of disability. At first, I found that very hard to wrap my head around because it just sounds so strange. But if a person has an osteognosia, it's going to come off like they have denial, like that they don't realize that they have any deficits. So let's say you have someone who is having very poor body awareness, like they have, let's say, you know, a broken leg. And they don't realize that they have this broken leg. And they're just like, oh, yeah, I can transfer out of bed with no problem. I don't need any help. I can get up and walk. Then that would be kind of how a person with an osognosia would think. Like they don't realize that they have a need and a, a deficit that's going to impact their activities of daily living. My friend invented a very silly way to remember this, and it's just stuck with me. So I don't know if it'll work for you. But I like to break it down as I know so. So it sounds very similar to the actual name. So anosognosia is I know so. A person who has anosognosia, if you were to be like, you can't do this, they'd be like, I know so. I know that I can do this. I know so. So I don't know why that stuck with me, but that's how I remember all the time. So I think of someone who's like just telling you relentlessly like, I don't have a deficit. I don't have a disability. I could climb those stairs. I know so. So that's how I remember anosognosia. I'm just going to go down the page. So the next one is asomatognosia. Oh man, that's a rough one to say. So right away, I think of medical terminology and I think of somato and I know that that has to do with body schemes. So when you see somato, you think, and there's an A in front of it, then it's without or lacking. So it's somato for body scheme disorder. It means that this person does not recognize their own body part. So that's how I remember asomatoagnosia. That is the way I remember it. Somato, you think about like the homunculus and the part of your brain that is helping you process that somatosensory information about your body parts. So think somato, body scheme, asomato, you have no body scheme. The next one and the last one is tactile agnosia. And this one is one of the most interesting agnosias to me. It's when you can't recognize objects by touch alone. I drew a little pocket and a key because the main example I think about when I hear this is when we dig in our pockets or in our backpack or purse without looking and we can right away distinguish what is what, a notebook versus a pencil versus your keys if you have intact tactile perception. So you can find the keys in your pocket and distinguish that from your phone and loose change. But someone who has tactile agnosia would have a very difficult time figuring out or recognizing different objects just by touch alone. And there is a form of tactile agnosia called astereognosis, and that comes up a lot. Uh, I did a lot of research on that a couple years back, and I found that really interesting also. Um, so that is also the same term where it's someone who is unable to identify and recognize objects with their eyes closed touching something alone. So that is that. And those are all of the agnosias I'm covering today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. I hope you're all doing well and taking care of yourselves and wishing you the best of luck. So take care and I'll see you guys next time.